In this video, we're going over how to create an Azure virtual machine using Terraform with both a public and private IP address. Stay tuned for a future video where I'll go over how to use the user data script when a VM is created. Before we can begin, there are two things we need to make sure we have installed on our system. First, we need Terraform installed and we need Azure CLI. I'll leave a link in the description on how to install these. I'll run a Terraform version real quick so you can see which version I'm on. And I'll also run an AZ version so you can see which version of Azure CLI I am on as well. If you are on a version that is way too far ahead of the versions you see here or way too far behind the versions you see here, you may encounter issues when you try to duplicate what we do in this video. Once you've got Terraform and the Azure CLI installed, we need to authenticate to Microsoft Azure. So we'll run an AZ login and this would open a web browser on your computer where you would select which account you would like to log in with to Microsoft Azure with. And then once you've selected your account, you'll get some details back about the account you've authenticated with. If you're running from a machine that doesn't have a web browser, you can also run this AZ login dash dash use dash device dash code. And we need to authenticate to Microsoft Azure because when we run Terraform uh, plan and Terraform apply, Terraform will use our Azure CLI credentials to reach out to our Microsoft Azure account to create our resources. There are other more secure ways to authenticate to Microsoft Azure with Terraform, but for simplicity's sake, for this video, we are only going to authenticate using the Azure CLI. So now that you've Terraform and the Azure CLI installed and you've authenticated to Microsoft Azure using the AZ login command, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new file and we'll call this versions.tf. And in this file, this is where we're going to specify the provider versions that we would like to use. I'll head on over to the HashiCorp registry and I'll browse providers. I'm looking for the Microsoft Azure provider, so I'll click on it and I'll click this use provider block and I'll copy the content. I'll go back to my versions.tf file and I'll paste the contents of that. This first Terraform block is telling Terraform that when I run Terraform init to initialize Terraform, please install the Azure RM provider and use this version. The second block are for whatever features I require for the provider, such as other authentication methods. I'll go ahead and remove this comment here and I'll start typing features and I'll just use an empty array. Now that we're told Terraform which providers and which versions of those providers we would like to use, we can go ahead and start creating resources. I'll create another file and I'll call this vm.tf. I'll go back to the HashiCorp registry documentation and for the Azure provider, I'll click the documentation button. On the filter section on the left, I'll search for virtual machine. For this video, I'll be using an Azure RM Linux virtual machine and not an Azure RM virtual machine. Real quick, if you do click on Azure RM virtual machine, you'll see this note that the resource has been suspended and Microsoft would prefer you to use a Linux virtual machine or window virtual machine resource. So that is why we're gonna use Azure RM Linux virtual machine. Read through these notes here to see if there's anything of interest to you in your situation when you're creating a VM. And for our example, we're going to copy this entire example usage block. I'll go back to my vm.tf file and I'll paste the example that I copied. You'll see a bunch of resources here that are not the virtual machine. And this video is about a virtual machine, but in order to create a virtual machine, we need to specify a resource group to put it in, a virtual network with a subnet to put it in. And we also need to create a network interface to attach to our VM so we can give the VM an IP address. In this default example, we'll have a private IP address but the next example I show you, we'll be doing a public IP address. And all that means to you is when we create this VM, you won't be able to reach it from outside the network. So if you're trying to reach it from your house, you won't be able to. Go ahead and look at all these resources and rename them to something important to you. Go ahead and edit the resource group location. And this is important because we'll be referring to this resource group location from all of our other resources. If you look at the Azure RM virtual network resource, we're referring to this resource group up here that dot example, example, location, and name. So we'll be doing that for all of our resources. I'll leave the name of the NIC alone. Again, I'll refer to the resource group, location, and name that we're creating up here, VM video in East US. And I'll leave the IP configuration as name internal and private IP address allocation dynamic. And we'll see later how to make this public. Go ahead and name the VM whatever you want. I'll keep it example virtual machine. We're gonna put this VM in the same resource group and that we create at the top of this file by referencing that resource group's name and location. Choose a size for your virtual machine. Go ahead and choose an admin username. And this is the user that gets created as the local administrator on your machine. For the network interface ID, we're actually going to pass in a list of IDs, right? That's what these two brackets are. But we're just going to refer to the one ID that we create. So this refers to the Azure RM network interface dot example resource that we create up here. This SSH key block is optional if you would like to not use it, 
But for however we're going to use it, and we're going to actually keep the username the same for admin user, and we can pass in a public key as either a file relative to our working directory, right? So relative to this directory here, or we can pass in the data of a public key directly. For this video, I'm just going to create one. So I'll create one right here in this directory, and I'll give it the name VM. I won't put a passphrase on it. And now we can see over here, I've got vm.pub, and I can pass in this string, right? Or I can just pass in the name of the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass in the name of the file right here. So I'll pass in vm.pub. And now when I do a Terraform init, it's going to look for that file uh, in this location, which is in the directory that I'm running from right here. For the OS disk, I'm going to leave this alone. This is just going to be uh, the type of disk that you want to use. And then for the source image reference. So for this example, they gave us 16.04. Um, that's pretty old. What we can do if you're not sure what version uh, or SKU or offer publisher, right? What kind of image you want to use? You can go ahead and run a command. You can run Azure uh, VM image list. And what this will do is it will return a very small list of what we call offline uh, image SKUs from different publishers, right? And I want actually uh, Ubuntu server canonical 18.04 LTS. So I'll go ahead and I'll run that. And it's worth noting you can run a dash dash all here and that will return the entire list, right? And then you can pass in different flags, publisher, offer, SKU, if you know them. Um, but this takes a long time to return and you're going to have to parse this data for what you want. So now we're ready to run a Terraform init to download our providers. I'll run a Terraform plan just to make sure, one, we can authenticate to Microsoft Azure, but two, that my Terraform configuration does what I expect it's going to do. We can see we're going to get five resources, and that's what we're expecting. So now I'll run a Terraform apply. I'll accept. We're creating our resources, and bam, that's done. So now if I go to my Microsoft Azure account and I look at my resource groups, I'll go ahead and do a refresh. I now have that resource group we created. And I have a virtual machine. And if we look at our virtual machine, we can see more details about it, such as the IP address that got assigned. So we've created a VM with a private IP address, but that doesn't help us much if we want to actually get into the machine from outside the network, right? For that, we would need a public IP address. Um, and we like if we wanted to access this from our house, for example, I'd need a public IP address or a load balancer. So in our example, let's go ahead and assign a public IP address as well to this virtual machine. If we go back to the documentation for our virtual machine, in this example, uh, this all comes down to this Azure RM network interface, right? This is where we're going to actually specify our public IP address information. So I'll search for the documentation of that resource, Azure RM network interface, and I'll search for public, um, let's see, public IP address ID. So in this IP configuration block, we can pass an optional attribute called public underscore IP underscore address underscore ID. So the ID of a uh, public IP address that has already been created. So that means we need to go create a public IP. So let's search for the public IP documentation. There's a resource, Azure RM public IP. So we'll copy this example here. I'll go back to the code and write under the network interface resource, I'll paste that example for the public IP resource. Uh, I'm going to rename this to VM video pub, oh, pub IP. Uh, it'll be in the same resource group, same location. Uh, I'll do static, and all this means is when it gets created, the IP address is not going to change. Um, if it were dynamic, which is the other option, the IP address would change. So now we're going to, when we create uh, run a Terraform apply, we're going to create a public IP. And then uh, with the Azure RM network interface resource, we need to specify an additional block here. Um, and this will be public IP address ID. And because we don't know this ID yet, we haven't created the uh, public IP resource yet, we'll need to reference that once it does get created by Terraform. So we'll reference that ID. And then I'll run a Terraform format just to fix that right there. And then, yeah. So what's really happening here is private IP address allocation. This is a required block. We can't get rid of it. It needs to be here. 
uh, because you're always going to get a private IP address. There's no way around that. You have to have one. Um, but additionally, now we're going to get a public IP address. So let's save that and run a Terraform reply. So we're adding a resource, which is our public IP, and we're changing a resource, which is our network interface. And that's done. I'll go back to my VM resource. I'll go ahead and refresh this. And now we can see a public IP address has appeared. Let's go ahead and test our connection to our VM on our public IP address. So we'll do an SSH-I. We'll provide the private key that we created, VM. And that goes to the public key that we put on the machine, vm.pub. Uh, we'll do admin user because that's the admin that we created for the machine we created. At, and then the public IP address, which for me is going to be 20.163.215.116. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I'm going to get this error because the permissions for this VM key file are too open. So I'll, real quick, I'll run a chmod 0600 uh, VM, and that will adjust those permissions here to just read and write. So now I can try an SSH again. And I'm in. I'm in my virtual machine. So we have successfully created a virtual machine with a public IP and connected to it. Although not the most secure method, uh, it suffices to... Hopefully give you a basic introduction of how to do this.